Rousseau, manager Billy Cardin, Nolan Carfagna, Nico Carucci, guys please start coming down, Owen Donahue, Captain Connor Donovan, Kyle Duggan, Tristan Engelhart, Tommy Fay, Shane Fries, Dan Gibson, Captain James Hannafin, Maxwell Hayward, Jimmy Hinnebush, Timmy Keefe, Zach Long, Johnny Lidstone, James McDermott, Donovan McCormick, Nathan McDermott, Jack Morgan, Cameron Morin, manager Sam Murphy, Connor Neidiger, Eddie Perry, Jimmy Peterson, Connor Rabinskis, Ryan Rabinskis, Wilson Smith, Kyle Tevall, Blake Thorne, and Jason Vickery. All right, we're looking right up at the podium back there. All set, guys. Thank you. Good luck Wednesday night. I'm, uh, I'm dead serious when I'm about to say this, but uh, Tristan, I have the same suit, and I was going to wear that tonight. Exact same one, so. All right, next up, our girls lacrosse coach, this is Courtney Sharon. Good evening. First, I would like to start by saying thank you to Mr. Buron, Kara, Pete, and the administration, and all of the parents for all of their support this season. Also, a huge thank you to my assistant coaches, Jenna, Chelsea, and Mike. Uh, they volunteer countless hours to help out the girls in the program, and I know that they really appreciate it, and I do too. We had a great season this year, although our record may not reflect that. We strengthened our schedule by picking up tougher uh, opponents in order to improve the overall quality of our program. Throughout the season, I was complimented by other coaches and officials about the sportsmanship and the heart that these girls possess. I'm so proud of their hard work, dedication, and determination um, that they brought to each and every practice. We had a couple of highlights this season that I'm very proud of. Sophomore Jenna Richie scored her 100th goal. And Jean was just recognized on Friday as a 2018 U.S. Girls Lacrosse High School All-American. So we're very proud of her. <laughs> to our seniors, we're going to miss you a lot. I've known you guys for four years between field hockey and lacrosse, and we're really going to miss you. I've enjoyed watching you guys grow into outstanding women, and I wish you lots of luck next year. So here we go. Carly Birch. Alex Byrne, Bella Calvani, Colleen Campbell, Molly Conlon, Caitlin Desenzo, Chloe Goodfrey, Abby Goodrich, Emma Goodrich, Shannon Lewis, Jill Lopes, Molly McClellan, 
Haley Mason, Riley McDonough, Jess Monahan, Caitlin Nassif, Kara Newberry, Gina Ricciotti, Victoria Sutherland, Katie Swart, and Trista Trinanez. Thank you. Today's 4 Deep Sports Talk broadcast is sponsored by Frank Bedeck Law Office. Visit them at bedecklaw.com. By Dr. Scott J. Mandel. Visit them at superiorortho.com. And by Source Pumping Incorporated. Simply the best at what they do. Visit them at sourcepumping.com. Congratulations, ladies. Uh, next up is the boys tennis coach. It gives me great pleasure to introduce myself because this year I coached the boys tennis team and uh, I thought I'd get a little chuckle out of some of the people back there but uh, we had no... Um, to say it was a, a new a learning curve for me and a new experience is an understatement but uh, before I introduce the players uh, I would like to thank a couple of people First of all, Athletic Director Dan Buron. I'd like to thank him for all his support. Uh, he sat me down a few times and had stern talks with me when the team wasn't doing too well. But uh, I'd also like to thank Kara because she would cover the, cover the office for me when I was on a couple of road trips or whatever. And uh, Mr. Jerry Connor, a former tennis coach who retired from that a few years ago, came back to assist me and volunteered. So I want to thank Jerry as well. Uh, very quickly, uh, we ended up 7-9, and nine. we went into the last game, we went down to Bonstable, uh, defending state champs that we beat previously when they came up here early in the year, uh, and we lost. But uh, every match that uh, we had this year, the boys played valiantly and, and fought till the bitter end. We had a small group, you can only compete seven kids, and we had seven kids on the team, so creating a lineup wasn't that difficult, even I could figure it out. Uh, but. These young men uh, work hard at it. Uh, I learned a lot from them. I grew a lot as a person and a coach, and I'm proud to say that I was their, their tennis coach today, uh, this year. So without further ado, I'd like to call up uh, the 2018 boys tennis team. So, uh, junior David Carter, junior Ryan Cashman, junior Nathaniel Grady, uh, junior Nick Levine, senior Travis Levine, co-captain, Senior co-captain Keegan O'Connor and sophomore Liam Stewart. Next up is our girls tennis coach, Mr. Robert Peterson. Okay, um, this was a rebuilding year for us. Last year we made the state tournament. We lost some pretty good seniors. Uh, I had 23 girls come out. I didn't cut anybody because uh, that's the only chance they have to learn how to play tennis is the courts across the street. Um, but we had, uh, we were competitive. Uh, we've got some good young players. Uh, our attitude, I was really happy with, with the attitude of every player on the team. Um, it was positive and upbeat, and I think we had, we had a lot of fun. We won a few matches. We were in a, a few others that we could have won, so it was a good year. And, uh, and that's a tribute to my captains as well. 
uh, we're young and next year looks pretty promising. So without ado, uh, earning letters for girls tennis, uh, sophomore Allison Carter, senior Virginia Ho, senior Sorrell LaBridge Hines, junior Ali LaMarca, Virginia and Sorella captains, uh, Captain Grace Richards, sophomore Ali Ringette, junior Stephanie Strom, junior Christina Town, sophomore Elia Velez, and junior Emily Whitaker. Congratulations, ladies. Next up, I introduce Mr. Jeff Souza, our boys spring track coach. Thank you, Mr. Bjorn. Uh, so your boys spring track team uh, had kind of a strange season. We actually had our first meet uh, early April and went down to Dartmouth and opened up with a really tough loss. Um, tight meet, went, came, came right down to the wire, but we didn't quite come out on top. From that point, we kind of had a, a strange situation, right? How do we respond? And I'm proud to say that they responded unbelievably. Um, it's a group of boys that worked extremely hard, came, you know, committed every day, committed to the best that they could be every day, and made huge improvements over the course of the season. Um, we actually have some competitors that will still be going individually. Uh, this week we have three athletes, Ed Woodbury, Chris Daly, and Greg Molesky going to the decathlon. And we also have Alex Weiler, who after coming in second in the javelin at the All-State meet this past Saturday, will compete in New England. So our boys, uh, boys varsity spring track roster, Greg Molesky, Gio Balsamo, Andy Baran, Patrick Barry, Pat Blair, Sam Busa, Matt Cady, Zach Cartwright, Kevin Compton, Christopher Daly, Aaron DeFlaminis, Devin Farley, Daniel Flaherty, Ben Hall, Noah Leach, Isaiah Manhart, John McDonald, Jackson Palmer, Yashawan Paul, Troy Pimento, Evan Posick, Anthony Renteria, Owen Trombley, Alexander Weiler, Benjamin Wachowski, and Edward Woodbury.
Congratulations, guys, on a great season. Good luck to Alex at uh, New England's next week. Uh, last but not least, for the spring sports, no stranger to the podium, Miss Amanda Wilcox, uh, girls track coach. Um, first off, I'd like to thank my assistant coach, Molly Page. Um, she's been instrumental in stepping in, helping out, and you know, taking some directive in a lot of different things, um, and freeing me up to do a lot of other things with you know, specialization with certain events and things like that. I um, also want to thank my captains, Zalana, Kylie, Aaron, and Tiara. They also really stepped in and helped out with drills, and I would give them the directions, and they would kind of take the lead with that. Um, so that was super helpful, um, so I could work on some other things as well. Um, we finished the season 4-1. and one. We ended up winning the OCL championship. Um, we have a fantastic group of young girls. Um, we only had like seven or eight seniors and juniors. Um, so most of my team was made up of freshmen and sophomores. Um, so the leaps and bounds they made this season was fantastic. Um, they're hardworking and full of a ton of, a a ton of potential uh, for the future. Uh, we ended the season with a lot of individuals and a couple of relays qualifying uh, for the divisional meet, so that was exciting. Um, and without further ado, I'd like to list off my roster here. Um, Zalana Bailey, Amelia Berlandi, Annabelle Chu, Ashley Cloutier, Julia Colombotis, Maya Cordero, Carissa Davis, India DiMiranda, Tiara Devine, Tessa Devine, Jillian Doherty, Anya Duby, Megan Feeney, Riley Ferreira, Olivia Foley, Jahida Gabriel, Emily Hammond, Erin Hiltz, Abigail Hunt, Kylie Lopes, Gwen Madden, Rachel Manning, Juliana Nacuzzi, Olivia Orfanos, Catherine Parody, Kaylani Thompson Green, Cassie Toftero, and Delaney Ambriana. Oh, we need, girls, we've got to wait for a picture. Girls, Miss Jerome's up there. Girls, come on back up. They run fast, they just don't listen well, I guess. But. Miss Jerome's right up behind the uh, control box up there. See her waving? Your best smiles, ladies. See Miss Jerome, the, the, the ones with the camera. All right, thank you again. That, that concludes the spring uh, Vasi Letters and Pin Awards Night. Uh, now we're going to get into the actual athletic awards, end of the year athletic awards night, which is a, a number of different special awards. The individual awards, um, most of them have been in existence since the, since the school was started back in the 61-62 school year. And the process to uh, select predominantly senior athletes to get these awards is all the coaches uh, on the male or female side will, will nominate respective athletes. It doesn't have to be someone on the team for the particular sport. And then the, as a coaching staff, they vote on, uh, on the awards. And some of the awards, we'll talk about them as we go through the process, uh, have taken on names of, of various people in the community. Um, we also have uh, Friends of BR Athletics started a sportsmanship award, and then each sport, uh, the coaches pick a Hall of Fame recipient, which goes on the board out in the uh, gym lobby as you come in by the cafeteria. 
as soon as we get settled down, we'll get started. Um, but the first special awards tonight, uh, the Lions Club has uh, sponsored an Eddie Cripps Memorial Outstanding Back and an Outstanding Lineman Award. Um, so to present the Eddie Cripps Memorial Outstanding Back is a longtime assistant coach with me and uh, I'm forever indebted for his uh, years of service and hard work and uh, probably has a few of his own moves and is elusive as any back I know, but it's my pleasure to introduce again to the podium Mr. John Carney to present this award. Thank you, Mr. Bjorn. Again, it's my pleasure to announce this year's Lions Club Eddie Cripps Memorial Outstanding Back Award for football. This year's recipient of the Eddie Cripps Memorial Outstanding Back Award is presented to a young man that truly has had a career to remember. He has been a starter on both offense and defense for the past three seasons. This year, he was the leading tackler on defense with over 100 tackles. On offense, he was the second leading rusher with 780 yards and second leading scorer on the team. A statistic that goes unnoticed is his blocking ability. He has been the lead blocker for a 1,000-yard rusher each of the past three seasons. His versatility as an athlete was evident as he was asked to play tailback due to injuries on a few occasions. Each time he rushed for well over 100 yards. His accomplishments on the field this year earned him many accolades. He was voted to the Old Colony League All-Star team for a second consecutive year. He was selected to the Taunton Gazette and Brockton Enterprise All-Scholastic teams for the second year in a row also. He was selected to the Boston Globe and the Boston Herald All-Scholastic teams this year. He was also chosen to the All-State Super 26 football team and was named the Defensive Player of the Year. His efforts, both on the playing field and in the classroom, earned him a selection to the Eastern Mass Chapter of the National Football Foundation Scholar Athlete Award. Coach Buron believes it was the leadership both on and off the field that was his most significant contribution to this year's successful football campaign. This young man's hard work, dedication, and leadership has earned him a commitment to the United States Naval Academy in the fall, where he will continue his football career. Congratulations and best of luck to Bryce Shaw. We ask the parents to come down too. Could Mr. and Mrs. Shaw also please come up? If Bryce's parents are here, could they come up please? I forgot to mention on the uh, individual awards, if the parents are here, could they please come up and celebrate with their uh, son or daughter. The Lions Club Outstanding Lineman Award, it's my pleasure to present this award tonight. And there, is, uh, there are two recipients, it's a co-award. We have a saying on the football team that it's amazing what can be accomplished when no one cares who gets the credit. And linemen have truly epitomized that saying. But these two gentlemen have epitomized this throughout their entire careers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a little uh, about each one of them, and I think it's uh, just if we just hold off and have them both come up together with their families, because the two of them have been such an instrumental part uh, to the success of the football program. So the first recipient of the Lions Club Outstanding Lineman Award has been a four-year member of the football program. He has started in the offensive line for the past three seasons. During this time, he has received many accolades for his outstanding play. He was selected to the Old Corner League All-Star team and the Taunton Gazette All-Scholastic team. Lyman did not get much credit, as I mentioned, but this young man can take pride in the fact that he helped a running back rush for more than 1,000 yards in each of the three seasons he started. 
Uh, not the biggest guy, uh, but took on uh, some very large people throughout his career and has dealt with many injuries and overcame them to be a positive role model for the, our younger players, always leading by example. He will be sorely missed by the coaching staff. However, we wish him all the success next year at the University of Massachusetts at Her Amherst. Congratulations to Connor Donovan. Our other co-recipient uh, has also been a four-year member of the football program and a three-year starter on defense. This year he was asked to move to the offensive line, uh, and he did this without question, without hesitation. Uh, he was also a unanimous choice as a captain this year. Over the past three seasons at the Vasi level, this young man has been the heart and soul of our team. An outstanding player, he was also a positive role model for the younger players. A man of few words, this player led by example through an untiring work ethic an unselfish approach to the game. He was asked to play in the offensive line uh, and looked like he had been playing it his entire career. On defense, he was our second leading tackler. This past season, his efforts on the field have earned him a place in the Old Colony League All-Star team, as well as the Brockton Enterprise and Taunton Gazette All-Scholastic teams. A quiet leader who always did, in the words of Bill Belichick, his job. Uh, this young man will be attending St. Anselm's University in the fall, where he will continue his football career. Congratulations also to James Hannafin. So if they could both come up together. Next on the agenda, a couple special recognition awards. Uh, 2016, we started the Bruce Langlin Award, um, and that's uh, for people who have really devoted a lot of time to FOBR and to the sports program um, and volunteered an uh, untiring uh, effort to, to make sure the program runs smoothly. Um, quick history, FOBR has been in existence for quite a while, but in 2004, when an override vote didn't pass, the athletic budget was not funded at all, and it was a year of very high user fees. And if anybody was around, a lot, of, a few of the coaches, I think Mr. Peterson, Mr. Carney, a few of us were around. We've been around a long time. It was devastating, and FOBO had been in existence to kind of augment. And they really had to step up to the plate. And Bruce Langland, since 2004, really did unbelievable amount of work um, for the sports program here, and then he retired from his various positions. Uh, and he truly epitomizes what a volunteer is all about. So the first year he was the recipient of the award and we try to reward people. Um, I'm gonna ask Jody, Jody Spear, the president, is gonna help me present this award. But this year's recipient, the Bruce Langland Award, has been around uh, many, many years uh, as our kids have gone through the school here. Uh, whatever is at, at every meeting, whatever is asked, no matter what task, the ones that nobody wants to do, she takes them on. Um, has been running the school store for a number of years, will be out in the concession stand if needed, selling uh, clothing out at the uh, football games, no matter what is asked of her. We may have gotten her here tonight under false pretenses, but uh, it is my pleasure to introduce this year's Bruce Langland Award winner. She's known as Missy, but it's Michelle Pierce. Please come up.
Another a special award tonight goes to a very, very special person uh, that lights up the hallways, and if you, you see her in the school, she just puts a smile on your face. But uh, this past year, she, she would help um, Mrs. Pierce in the school store, so we wanted to make sure she got recognized for all of her hard work. So we're going to present this young lady with uh, this beautiful plaque, and it says, Thank you for your untiring effort and sacrifice for all the student athletes at Bridgewater Random Regional High School. It's going to be presented uh, from the Bridgewater Random Athletic, Athletic Department on June 4th, 2018. And this is going to go to Miss Sarah Thomas. <laughs> Sarah works at the school store, volunteers her time, takes care of inventory, folds all the clothes. Why don't you get a picture? Thank you, Sarah. Okay, uh, next on the agenda will be the um, Fober uh, Sportsmanship Awards. Each coach is afforded an opportunity to pick a member of the team who represents what sportsmanship is all about. And uh, this, this award probably is, is arguably the most important award we have. Uh, so what I will do is I am going to read the recipients. And I'm going to ask uh, our president of FOBA, Jody Spear, to hand out the certificates. What we're going to do is we'll do the female athletes first. And we'll ask them all to come up. I'll announce the sport and then the, the student athlete. And they'll come up and like we did with the spring sports once they're up here, uh, if we could take a group photo. And then we'll do the, the male athletes. Okay, so the female sportsmanship recipients. For basketball, Brooke Reagan. For cheerleading, Alexis Rose. For cross country, Ashley Cloutier. For field hockey, Emily Wyszewski. Gymnastics, Olivia Orfanos. Lacrosse, Riley McDonough. Spring track, Kylie Lopes. Soccer, Cassidy Small. Softball, Jocelyn Donahue. Swimming, Grace Bowman. Tennis, Virginia Ho. Volleyball, Rachel Macefield. Winter track, Emily Hammond. Congratulations to all you ladies for an outstanding award. You good? The male sportsmanship recipients. For baseball, Jake Maloney and Jack Needham. Basketball, Mark Willis. Cross country, Andrew Power. Football, James Gimler. Golf, Ryan Smith. Lacrosse, Daniel Gibson and Jason Vickery.
Spring Track, Zachary Cartwright. Soccer, Matthew Sanford. Swimming, Caleb McCauley. Tennis, David Cotter. Winter track, Keegan O'Connor. Wrestling, Shane Corboy. Today's 4 Deep Sports Talk broadcast is sponsored by Frank Bedeck Law Office. Visit them at bedecklaw.com. By Dr. Scott J. Mandel. Visit them at superiorortho.com. And by Source Pumping Incorporated. Simply the best at what they do. Visit them at sourcepumping.com. It could be a combination of outstanding player this season or overall commitment to the program throughout their careers here. And that's the, the wall out on the outside there in the lobby. So uh, it has been tradition over the years that the headmaster principal of the building inducts them and calls the names into the hall. So what we're going to do is the same thing. We'll do the females and the males as a group. Kind of, uh, and hold the applause till the end and they'll take a group picture. So without further ado, it's my pleasure, although she needs no introduction, is uh, Miss Angela Watson, our principal. Thank you, Mr. Buron. I am honored to be here tonight to present both the male and female Hall of Fame recipients. We will begin with the female Hall of Fame recipients, representing basketball, Shannon Lynch and Brooke Reagan. <laughs> Cheerleading, Mackenzie Giordano and Christina Pekarski. Cross Country, Erin Hiltz and Emily Newcomb. Field Hockey, Peyton Elliott, Savannah Page and Katherine Swart. Gymnastics, Julia Chase and Olivia Keys. Lacrosse, Gina Marie Ricciotti and Katherine Swart. Spring Track, Tiara Devereaux, sorry, Tiara DeVoe and Juliana Nacuzzi. Girls Soccer, Katherine Nidegger and Brooke Reagan. Softball, Hannah Rideout and Alexis Silva. Swimming, Shannon George and Hannah Kramer. Volleyball, Hannah Rideout and Lindsay Shearstone. I just called up volleyball. And winter track, Tiara DeVoe and Kaylani Thompson.
Basketball, Douglas Alves and Darius Hippolyte. Cross Country, Samuel Busa and Jason Vickery. Football, James Hannafin, Bryce Shaw, and Corey Sullivan. Golf, Justin Lavoy, AJ LeMay, and Luke Myers. Lacrosse, Connor Donovan, James Hannafin, and Blake Thorne. Spring track, Daniel Flaherty and Alexander Wheeler. Soccer, Anthony Brazeo and Kurt Pina. Swimming, Nicholas Shavs and Sam McGee. Tennis, Keegan O'Connor. Winter track, Christopher Daly and Edward Woodbury. And wrestling, Shane Corboy and James Gimler. Congratulations. Congratulations, gentlemen. Thank you, Ms. Watson. Uh, next up is the Kiwanis Unsung Hero Award. And uh, who better to uh, present this award is the Assistant Superintendent, the Unsung Hero. Gets all the dirty deeds. <laughs> Let's, when things go well, Mr. Swenson gets all the credit, and he just stays in the trenches. But no, I'm just joking about that. But a big supporter, uh, our assistant superintendent, Mr. Ryan Powers, to present the Unsung Hero Awards. Mr. Powers. Thank you, Coach Barron. It does me a great pleasure to present tonight the Kiwanis Unsung Hero Awards, and we'll start with a female award winner. The unsung hero is one that performs despite little to no fanfare. They do not look for individual glory, but instead earn praise through helping their team achieve success. They impact their team on and off the field through their ability to motivate and encourage their teammates. They have the ability to fill positions within the team that are not the most desirable, but are necessary for the team's triumph. In short, they do the little things that go unnoticed to make bigger things happen. These qualities are at the heart of the unsung hero and these qualities are fitting of this year's recipient. This young lady wasn't the leading scorer or rebounder for the girls basketball team this past season, but she made her presence felt each time she took the court. Whether it was setting a screen, grabbing a rebound, playing tough defense, diving on the floor to get the loose ball, or simply cheering her teammates on, she not only defined an unsung hero, she defined what it means to be a leader by example. She played in all 23 games during the Lady Trojans' 18-5 season this winter and recorded 36 rebounds, 14 steals, 9 assists, and 8 points. The numbers will never tell the story of the far-reaching impact she had on the program, not only this year, but for the teammates that will follow her. While on the track team, she was selected captain by her coach. Her individual contribution helped her team secure the OCL championship every season during her four years on the team. Behind the scenes, she was the voice of her teammates and was a source of encouragement to them. During her year, her first three years as a track athlete, she primarily threw the javelin, throwing over 90 feet to qualify herself in the Division I championship. 
During her senior year, she expanded her role to fill a team need and quickly learned to throw the shot put in discus. This helped her team pick up needed points as many, at many dual meets. She also qualified for the Division I championship in the disc with a throw of 90 feet. Because of that versatility, the girls track team was able to earn necessary points in those events and secure OCL championship and finish the season 4-1. and one. She leaves behind a legacy of dedication, perseverance, hard work, and selflessness that will long be remembered and hopefully emulated. Her coaches wish her good luck in the fall when she attends Springfield College, majoring in applied exercise science. Congratulations to the female recipient of the 2018 Kiwanis Unsung Hero, Kaylee Lopes. Now for the 2018 male Kiwanis Club Unsung Hero. The Unsung Hero Award is given annually to a student athlete whose performance, dedication, and leadership often times go unnoticed. These individuals may not always grab the headlines, but their commitment is what drives their team's success. This year's male recipient of the Unsung Hero Award is a four-year member of both the football and lacrosse programs. On the football team, this young man was a three-year starter on defense and as a senior was a two-way starter on both offense and defense. He also served as team captain during his senior year. His tremendous work ethic allowed him to be an exemplary performer on both sides of the ball. Defensively, he was the team's second leading tackler, while offensively, he played multiple positions on the offensive line. He was honored as an OCL All-Star, a Taunton Gazette All-Scholastic, and a Brockton Enterprise All-Scholastic. More important to this young man is the success of his team. The Trojans won the OCL and advanced to the Division I South Sectional Final for the second consecutive year. This young man's leadership and performance were major factors to this successful season. His coaches stated that he is the ultimate team player and an outstanding leader. He played various positions, always for the benefit of the team, never looking for the spotlight. His selflessness is a model for all younger players on the team. As a lacrosse player, this young man made the varsity team as a freshman. He was immediately inserted into the position of defensive midfield a position that does not garner much attention. Over time, he worked hard and developed into a strong offensive performer. Each season, his points total increased, and he continually registered more assists than goals. This is no surprise, as he has always tried to help his teammates and prefers others to get the limelight. When talking to his coach about when his first goal of the season would come, he said he didn't care because he prefers assists. This is him in a nutshell. During his varsity career, his selfless efforts assisted the team in becoming the league champions all four years. Despite his quiet demeanor, he is a tough and fierce competitor. His teammates clearly see this as he served as a team captain for both football and lacrosse. His coaches say that he will be sorely missed next year as he continues his education and football career at St. Angelum College. Congratulations to this year's male recipient of the 2018 Kiwanis Club Unsung Hero Award, James Hannafin. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Powers. 
Next up is the Paul Urban Achievement Award. Paul Urban uh, came here, I believe, in 1978, uh, fall of 77, as the head football coach. And then uh, about five years later, became the athletic director and uh, really steered this athletic program in the right direction and uh, was just a hardworking individual. And on his retirement, they came up with uh, the uh, Paul Urban uh, Award for an athlete that overcomes adversity or perseveres through some difficult situations throughout their career. Um, we're going to ask a couple of our school committee members to present um, the Paul Urban Award. So presenting the female recipient, I'm going to ask Ms. Lillian Holbrook to come up and present the Paul Urban Award. Ms. Holbrook. I am honored to present to you tonight the Paul Urban Senior Athletic Achievement Award. Tonight's female recipient is a four-year participant in the cross-country and basketball programs and a three-year varsity athlete in both sports. In January of her junior year, this athlete sustained an injury for the second time in her athletic career. After having one of her finest basketball performances in a big win against a league rival, Barnstable High, three days later, she was driving to the basket against Whitman Hansen when she crashed to the court, having suffered a season-ending knee injury. This wasn't the first time she had faced such adversity, and she certainly did not let it define her. After months of rehabilitation, she returned to running and the basketball court her senior year. Determined to set an example as a player and a team leader, and she certainly succeeded in both this past fall and winter. This young lady has success early on in her high school running career. She was a top 10 runner for BR on a talented team during her freshman and sophomore years. She brought home individual medals from the freshman race of the Twilight Invitational and helped the team to win the freshman-sophomore division of the Big Wave Invitational, finishing fifth. During her sophomore year, she ran a 5K personal best of 21 minutes, 9 seconds, showing promise for a great running career. She continued to have success throughout her junior year, earning a spot on the roster of the Eastern Mass Divisional Championship. Most impressive was her ability to return to running just seven months after debilitating injury. She never used her injury as an excuse. She used it to motivate herself. She never asked for accommodations and never backed out of a difficult team workout. Because of her persistence and resilience, this senior captain was able to work her way back to the top seven for BR and make it back onto the roster of the Eastern Mass Divisional Championship, a feat no one expected. Returning to the basketball court her senior year, this young lady started in all 21, 23 games of, for the Trojans and ranked second on the team in scoring, averaging 9.1 points per game. As captain, she was the team leader in three-pointers with 47 of them, while adding 55 rebounds, 33 assists, and 14 steals and if there was ever a big shot that needed to be taken and made, she delivered. She set the tone for one of the best seasons in program history, with a record of 18 wins and five losses. This included a 16-game winning streak, BR's longest in 28 years. She helped lead the Trojans to the fifth straight Old Colony League Championship and a playoff berth in the MIAA South Sectional Semifinals with memorable home tournament wins over Marshfield and Oliver Ames. She was named as the first team OCL 
All-Star and earned both Brockton Enterprise and Taunton Ga Daily Gazette all scholastic honors. Her legacy of overcoming adversity is one that she will always endure in the program. She will continue her basketball career at Springfield College, and her coach says, not only are they getting a great player, they're getting an even better person. Congratulations to the female recipient of the 2018 Paul Urban Senior Athletic Achievement Award, Shannon Lynch. Congratulations, Shannon. Thank you, Mrs. Holbrook. Our next presenter, uh, another school committee uh, member, it's my pleasure to introduce Mrs. Julie Skloparis to present the boys Paul Urban Award winner, Mrs. Skloparis. It is with great pleasure that I am here to present the Paul Urban Senior Athletic Achievement Award. The Paul Urban Senior Athletic Award is given annually to student athletes who overcome challenges and adversity in their time as Trojans. This year's male recipient has persevered through multiple injuries while competing in the football and lacrosse programs over the past four years. In football, this young man was a three-year starter on the offensive line. For his play, he earned Old Colony League All-Star as well as Taunton Gazette All Scholastic. His football coaches remarked that he is incredible with determination made up for any size difference with opponents. He was a positive role model for younger players. Even when injured, he remained positive and assisted the players with their development. His coaches went on to say that he possesses an unsurpassed work ethic and the team was lucky to have him and he almost served as an assistant coach on the offensive line. As a member of the lacrosse program, this young man was a four-year varsity team member and three-year starter on defense. He was a two-time Maritime League All-Star, and as a senior, he served as captain. Playing defense in lacrosse is much like football's offensive line. There is, not much, there is not a lot of glory for strong play. Every game, he was tasked with covering the opponent's top offensive threat, and in every game, he proved to be the dominant player. He has been the leader of a defense that only gave up 4.68 goals per game, which ranks as the seventh best in the state. Despite being a defenseman, he made his presence known on the offensive end of the field, scoring three goals. All of his achievements have not come without struggles. As a junior, starting on the football offensive line, he suffered a broken bone in his leg, ending his season. Through months of rel relentless rehab and his incredible work ethic, he was able to play lacrosse that spring, exhibiting the level of skill he is known for. During his senior football season, he suffered an ankle injury, which sidelined him for a couple of games. During both of these periods of injury, this young man coached up the younger players, doing anything necessary for his team. As a senior, he helped lead both the football and lacrosse teams to lead championships. His toughness, perseverance, work ethic, and positive attitude have been great examples for all his teammates and will be missed by his coaches. They wish him all well with this. We wish him well this fall when he attends the University of Massachusetts Amherst. This year's male recipient of the Paul Urban Senior Athletic Achievement Award is Connor Donovan. <laughs>
Congratulations to the Donovans, and thank you, Mr. Koparis, for presenting that award. Uh, next up is the Good Neighbor Award. Uh, we have a, the original Good Neighbor Award was named after Jim Buckley, and that's the male award, and I'll speak to that in a minute. Uh, the, the female uh, Good Neighbor Award is named after Jane Witherall, who was a former student athlete here, and her life was taken uh, from us much too early as a senior in high school. And uh, it's my pleasure to introduce her brother, Mr. Peter Witherall, to present the Jane Witherall Good Neighbor Award. Mr. Witherall. Thank you, Dan. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, we recognize and celebrate uh, co-recipients of the 2018 Jane Witherell Good Neighbor Award. Uh, the award recognizes student athletes who have distinguished themselves through demonstrated acts of sportsmanship and ethical behavior. And I would like to add uh, to that that um, my sister Jane uh, was the co-captain of the cheerleaders. Uh, she was on the National Honor Society and a band member. So at the time of her death back in 1977, she was also uh, accomplished to add to those characteristics that I just read. And besides that, uh, based on the outpouring of support that we received at the time of her death, I would say there's absolutely no doubt that she was very, very, very well liked. So without even reading uh, anything about the two uh, co-recipients, um, I'm pretty sure that, that those uh, two will also fit the categories of being accomplished and very well liked. So the first uh, student athlete, uh, co-recipient of the, a of the uh, Jane Witherell Good Neighbor Award, <clears throat> is an AP student, class secretary, and a volunteer of the town's youth field hockey and lacrosse programs. She had been a member of the field hockey and lacrosse programs for the past four years, taking on the role as captain for lacrosse this year. Her behavior exhibited during the competition is based on values, respect, and integrity. The athlete consistently respects competitions, student athletes, coaches, and officials. She encourages student athletes to demonstrate good sportsmanship and ethical conduct in and out of competition. She acts with integrity and respect for others across all endeavors. She has built positive relationships with her teammates and coaches and has helped her team accomplish common goals and create long-lasting friendships and memories. This student athlete exemplifies an unselfish leader and role model who has worked hard on the field and in the classroom. She is someone who plays for her teammates and the love of the game. As she heads off to Framingham State to play lacrosse in the fall, we are confident that the life lessons she learned while at Bridgewater Rainham High School will continue to bring her great success. This year's co-recipient of the 2018 Grant Jane Witherell Good Neighbor Award is Riley McDonough. The second core recipient is a member of the National Honor Society and three-sport athlete participating in varsity volleyball as well as varsity swimming and varsity softball for four years. Her sportsmanship since she was a freshman has grown more prevalent with each passing year. She is very well respected among her peers for her positive attitude and desire to help others get better. Although quiet, her actions speak volumes. She has always been willing to step up, work hard, and do what she needs to do to help her team and teammates in all of her sports. She would often be seen helping younger players. During swimming, she continued to get better personally by working on her skills 
to become one of the team's top breaststroke. In softball, she exhibited great work ethic and hustle.
Today's 4 Deep Sports Talk broadcast is sponsored by Frank Bedeck Law Office. Visit them at bedecklaw.com. By Dr. Scott J. Mandel. Visit them at superiorortho.com. And by Source Pumping Incorporated. Simply the best at what they do. Visit them at sourcepumping.com. This young man took his feet to the track, where he had an excellent career. During the winter season, he completed the 600 meter, setting a personal record of 129.80, an effort which made him the Old Colony Champion event. He was also a member of the 4 by 400 meter relay team, which ran a 336.99 and placed sixth at the Division II Championship team. He was selected as an Old Colony All Star. Boston Enterprise and Pontiac to get all the classes. In spring track, he selflessly volunteered to change events from the 800 meter race to the 400 meter hurdles to fill the key needed. Despite having no hurdling experience, he went on to run at the time 59.91 seconds, becoming the old Hongkong champion of the event and qualifying for the Division I championship. He continued to be an instrumental member of the 4 by 400 meter relay team, which ran a 335.19 and also qualified the Division I championship. In the classroom, he's an exceptional student, taking in a number of advanced placement classes and earning the best success. He completed high school and ranked sixth in his class with a grade of an average of 4.59 and a member of the National Society. He will attend Thomas College in the fall, where he will study finance and continue his track and field career. Congratulations to this year's Neil Post Secretary of the 2018 Robert Barrett Scholar at the Award, Christopher Hale. Student Council, assisted with the TJ Large Competition, the 
participated in the photography club, the formal hands club, the art club, the book club, and the SB Cycle Club. In the community, in the community, she was also a team member of the Manatee Hand Extension. Next year, she will attend the University of Connecticut to pursue her national problem solving using computer programming. Please join me in congratulating this year's Eagle recipient of the 2018 Rob Graff Award, Virginia Hill. Congratulations, Virginia. Uh, next up, last but not least, uh, we're almost done, folks. Thank you for your patience. Uh, the outstanding senior athlete of awards will be presented. Uh, we're going to ask uh, our superintendent of the tradition to they present us with awards. So, my pleasure to introduce. Uh, he's going to do the uh, Serge J. Bernard Award as the male senior athlete. And Serge J. Bernard is our first ever superintendent of the district. And then uh, present the Brenda Bills. Award the female athlete award. Brenda Lewis, a BI grad, a single athlete, and again, her life's time. Uh, we wish you all, and this award was made after her a long, long time ago. But without further ado, our superintendent, Mr. Derek Swanson. Coach Muron. <laughs> it's my honor to introduce first the outstanding male athlete. This year's recipient of the Serge J. Bernard Outstanding Male Athlete has completed a most impressive career in Jordan Bay Region High School. This three sport athlete has been a four year member of the boys' soccer team, the winter track team, the boys' tennis. Ranked 19 in his class, he is a member of the National Honor Society and is a young man that truly minimizes what his student athlete represents. In soccer, he was tied for the leading scorer of this year's team. He was an ultimate teammate that would support anyone, especially the young players. He would do whatever he needed to do that was in the best interest of the team, often sacrificing his own interest for the betterment of the team. This young man had an unparalleled work ethic. Coach Hannon says of him, he was the easiest player to coach who would play any position without a question. He never had a negative comment to say about anyone or anything. He's the hardest working player on the team. In winter track, this young man had an excellent career in multiple events. Coach Souza says he was a quiet leader, always modeling great behavior. A true role model for the young athletes. This past season, he had a personal best of 20 feet 5 inches in the long run and qualified for the Division II State Meeting. He is also a member of the Old Colony Champion 4x400 relay team. On the tennis court, this young man had an outstanding career, which earned him four letters in all four years. This year, he was the captain of the team and a leader. His individual record was 12 wins and 4 losses. He participated in the MIAA individual tournament, advancing to the quarterfinals of the South Section. His postseason accolades include Old Colony League All Star, Rockton Enterprise All Star, and Tom Pizette All Scholastic. Coach Bernard says of this young man, a truly gifted athlete, a tremendous teammate and leader 
a positive role model on the Ultimate Repair. He was extremely helpful to me in my first year as tennis coach, offering me advice. I am thankful for his assistance and dedication to the tennis program. This young man is truly a true sport athlete, excelling in three better than sports. His sportsmanship, competitiveness, and leadership is unparalleled. He's one of the most well-liked student athletes, respected by classmates and teachers. He will be missed, but certainly not forgotten. We wish him well next fall as he's entering the University of Massachusetts at Edinburgh, where he's been accepted into the prestigious Eisenhower School of Engineering. I am proud to announce the recipient of the 2018 Serge Bernard Outstanding Man Athlete to Keegan O'Connor. some sort of inspiration. Inspiration to work hard, be a good teammate, attend every practice and game, all while getting good grades. It's a lot to balance. This year's recipient embodies all the necessary qualities to receive this award. In her coaching stay, she herself is an inspiration. All the training, practice, and sacrifice in the world will not produce results unless your mental game and dedication is there. It is an understatement to say that this young lady produced results as her accomplishments are beyond expectations and set forth by her. Her natural talent combined with her hard work ethic made for an extensive athletic resume that any coach, parent, teammate would be immensely proud of. As a member of the gymnastics team, she was a team captain her sophomore junior and senior year. She was a three-time leading all-star in full exercise, as well as the 2018 league champion. In her junior and senior year, the team was a primary chance and won back-to-back Division I state gymnastics team champions, a title VR hasn't earned in nearly 20 years. Following this year's state championship, she and her team teammates went on to become the 2018 New England Gymnastic Champions. Individually, she is a member of the 2018 Massachusetts Senior National Gymnastics Team, a three-time Mass Champion Individual Gymnastics Champion Qualifier, and a four-time USA Gymnastics State Champion in Balance Painting. As a four-year member of the varsity Cheerleader Team, some of her numerous accolades include being a four-time Old Colony League Champion, three-time regional champion, Division I state champion in three years in a row, 2015, 2016, 2017, and the 2018 NCA national champions. She was also a member of the 2017 NCA All-American Cheerleading Team, which is a prestigious accolade when earning this for cheer. Her coaches both echo it has been truly an honor to coach this young woman, and our positive should be going on to great things in life. This fall, she will be attending Winnipeg University, where she has received a scholarship as a member of the Division I team. In conclusion, this young lady has been a member of five Division I state championship teams, a feat that has never been accomplished in the history of the Victoria Regional High School Athletics and most likely will never be again. I am proud to announce the recipient of the 2018 Red Outstanding Female Athlete to Ms. Julia Chase.
Thank you, Mr. Swanson. Congratulations, Julia. Mr. Swanson set up five state championships in the high school career. Think about that. Safe to say, huh? we may not see that. Won't see that in my lifetime again. I don't know. But some good coaches, though, you never know. Anyways, that concludes our program. I want to thank everybody for your patience. There are refreshments out in the cafeteria. Also, if the award recipients want to write up parents or kids, email my office. We can send that to you, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. Today's Four Deep Sports Talk broadcast is sponsored by Frank Bedeck Law Office. Visit them at bedecklaw.com. By Dr. Scott J. Mandel. Visit them at superiorortho.com. And by Soros Pumping Incorporated. Simply the best at what they do. Visit them at soruspumping.com.